All right, welcome to another episode of Let's Go Brandon Green. So today we have Martha Mock, if that is your real name, Martha. How are you? my real name. <laughs> Nia ma, Martha. Nia Nia. <laughs> Martha, how are you? So was that your like Chinese Asian name or? Uh, it is my Christian name. So Martha is actually a, a, a Catholic name. And then my parents put it in there. And then I got my Yan name in the middle as well before my surname. Do you go to church? Not really. <laughs> You're a bad Christian or Catholic or whatever you are. It's all about in the heart. You believe, you trust, and you give. That's what the teaching is for. That's it. Yeah. People to become, they go there so they can become good people like me and you. Mm, yeah. Exactly. All right. And you are a super confidence coach. That's who you are. It is. I help ambitious leaders to find their super confidence, that superpower that within them, so they can speak up, be heard, and also be respected as well. Right. So who, firstly, how do you just, who appoints you as a super confidence coach and what you woke up one day and said, I am so confident I'm going to coach other people to be as confident as me? I come from a very colorful background. I was someone who was in silence for over 30 years. Someone who was been told that I should shut up, put my head down, just be the wife, the daughter, the sister that all Asian culture expect me to be. It took me 19 years to be able to get out from my abusive marriage. I was bullied at school since the age of six. And the hardest thing for me to admit was being sexually molested by someone I trust. All of that kept me in silence for so long. On the outside, I'm very confident wanting my uh, international multi-award winning makeup business. But on the inside, I was scared. I was too proud and I was empty. One of the hardest things, which is a wake-up call for me, was my ex-husband told me that I was worthless, that I wasn't even worth a pile of dirt. And that woke me up. And that's how I realized that my super confidence is from within, despite what is happening for me on the outside. So when you woke up, you were like, I I reckon what happened was you probably woke up and was like, wow, this is how the other half live. Like, this is... (laughs) Wow, this is how good life can be. Like, is that what happened? Like, you've, you got- it was on my 40th birthday that day. I asked myself because I was so depressed at those times. I said to myself, I only want to live up to 60 years old. So that means I only got 20 years left in life. What do I want? And I find out that, you know what? I want to be happy and I want to find someone who will treasure me and see me as who I am. So that day I decided that I will apply for divorce and I will find my life again. It wasn't easy. I lost everything, everything that I have built up all this, that years, all those years. And you know what? It's okay. Life will always support you when you believe it. And it took me about a year and a half before I find my current partner. And he is the person who gave me the super confident coaching name. Because he said that um, you are actually very confident. You're one of the most confident women that I ever met. And I'm like, really? Oh, my God. Like, it took me about three months to get used to the name. And I feel like that there's a lot of women outside like myself. On the outside, they're very tough. They're facing every single day. They're managing a team over a thousand people. It doesn't matter. Inside, we still feel like that we are insecure. We are not confident, but we pretend to be good every single day. And that will catch up on you eventually. So I decided I would dedicate myself and my time to help those women who knows they are good enough, but don't believe in themselves. And I help them to find themselves again, find that superpower from within so they can be speaking up, be heard and be respected at the same time. So you were in a um, relationship that made you feel no confidence? When someone tells you that you are not even worth a pile of dirt, that really affects one's confidence. Really? And no but you could say that to me and I'd laugh at you. <laughs> I'd say I'm brand yeah, and green. What are you told- talking about? Yeah, but when you've been told every single day, it 
really hurts and it affects you that. as a person. Yeah, I've it heard really some do. people say that, like they get chipped mm. away, boom, 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 till there's nothing mm. left of them or something. Exactly. And I didn't let that happen because the more he said it, the more I realized that, no, I'm better than what you say I am. I mm. have proven to myself, wanting a successful career, that I am worth something. Maybe in his eyes, I'm not worth it, but in my eyes, I am. So I finally learned what is self-love. Because mm-hmm. during that time when I'm flying all over the world, having the most luxurious handbag, staying in a five-star hotel, eating the most fine dining, I thought I have self-love. I didn't know that I didn't. Because when people told me that to have more self-love at that time, I actually tell them to F off because <laughs> I thought I love myself. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't treat myself with respect and yeah, value well. myself for who I am. Well, I guess if you've done, you know, 180 there and have been there and then you can see, like I said earlier, like you can see the other side. Mm. You can guide other people who are in that same position that you once were and say, Mm. let's get you over here, let's get you feeling good. Um, I'd imagine, is that correct? It's more about realising who we truly are and what we want. It took me a long time, like 30 years, to find out who I am and what I really want. And there is a way that you can do it faster. I walked the long path. I was on a slow lane and it took me 30 years. And with working with me within a three months time, I can get you back into the right path. Yes, you don't become super confident in one day, but in a three months that we're working together, you will be able to build it up. So the day that you can tell yourself, I'm confident in who I am. Yes, I'm not perfection and there will be never be perfection, but I'm proud of myself for who I am that I can be better every single day. Yeah, right. And how long have you been doing um, this for, this coaching? About three years now. Yeah. And uh, how's how's that been going for you? Pretty good? I love it because beside uh, female leaders, executive managers that I work with, I also work with people who are interested into the coaching world, who wants to use their passion, what their skill have. It's not a certificate. There's a lot of life skill that you learn. It doesn't come from a certificate. So I teach them how to use their superpower and turn it into a coaching business. And um, a lot of your clients are Asian like yourself? or No, they... I actually have a client all over the world. That's actually the good thing. I have clients in India, Singapore, UK, Switzerland, uh, America, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, which is a great way that now technology and, and thanks to COVID that the online space have really opened up for all of us. So it doesn't yeah. matter where we are, all we need is internet. Yeah. And then, yeah, you've, and they can reach you. And, uh, yeah, it's been quite crazy how COVID sped everything along. Um, but, yeah, in, in your space, it would be good. Uh, so what would be a typical person going through that would reach out to your services? Someone that they may be having a new job that they got into, but they don't feel like that they're adequate in there. They don't feel like they're enough. They feel like they're pretending. All those imposter syndrome is affecting their self-confidence. So I help them to realize their superpower. Right. I'll just stop you there because I hear Mm. this imposter syndrome a lot. Mm. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know what it is. What is imposter (laughs) syndrome? And is it something that you treat or what is it? Imposter syndrome is come from mindset. So it's how we see ourselves when we are projecting ourselves. Uh, being an imposter, meaning that we are not good enough. We're not good enough for the outside world to accept us. But the truth is what is good enough and what is bad. We create all these stories in our heads, telling ourselves that we are not going to be able to be Bill Gates or someone that who's very successful like Elon Musk. But we all have our superpower that we can expand. So by knowing what is your best, and that helped you to break down that wall of feeling like an imposter. Because we don't need to be like someone else. We just need to be the best version of ourselves. That's weird because I can't even relate to that. <laughs> what, so <laughs> some people, they like look at Elon Musk and think, I need to be better than him or... 
have more money than they him or something? They will, and it is, it is a mindset thing. Some people look at Elon Musk and think, oh, he's a pretty good guy. Oh, he earns a lot of money. That's great. Uh, but other people will look at it as that, oh, I will never be like him. That, that's never going to be happening to me. I'm not good enough to be any of that or any close to that. And that's come from an imposter. But why are they not that happy with that? Like, I, I believe that too. But mm. I don't care. Like, that's who the would thing. care about that? If you don't care, that's great. But a lot now, of why would you care? care? There can only be one richest in the world, and what you think you're going to be that person? Like that is the mindset. What's so good thing. about being the richest in the world? <laughs> I and, and I completely agree with you, Brendan. There's no point. There's no way in my head that I want to become Elon Musk. I just want to become Martha Mock. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. And a happy version of Martha Mock. Yeah. Um, so back to this imposter syndrome because I have mm. heard it a lot. Is it a mm. new term being used in the last few years? Or? Uh, not really, but it is a term that because <laughs> the coaching world has become the second biggest career that is actually booming up, so a lot more people is talking about these terms that we're hearing. It's just about the feeling that we're feeling we're not adequate and we're feeling that we're not good enough. So they put a lovely turn into it, into talking about it as imposter syndrome, that they're faking themselves to until if one day they break down and they can't handle it anymore. We probably heard of a term that fake it till you make it, but you can only fake something for so long if you don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about like, I would say I've got the opposite of imposter syndrome where I wake up every morning thinking, wow, I get to be me. Like, wow, I'm me. That's you know amazing. I mean? like That's Elon best... Musk doesn't get to be Brandon Green. He doesn't exactly. get to. Exactly. And, and then you just go along the positives and be like, I can go jump in my car and go to the shops and chill out yeah. at the cafe. Like, he can't do that. You know exactly. what I mean? So anyone who, who, who thinks they want to be like someone or better than them, mm. you already are better than them, just in, in exactly. a different way. I could be. I, I could do your job. I reckon. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Anyone I have can heard, actually I have heard, wisdom. Yeah, well, I have heard my, some people say to me, you know, people pay a lot of money and spend a lot of time to, get, to try to get the mindset that you just naturally have, and mm -hmm. I'm like, really? But yeah, I do, honestly, now it makes sense because imposter syndrome, I can't relate to a bit, and I do feel sorry and sad for people that do suffer from this they just need to slap themselves in the face and just you know grab on to themselves and say nothing's wrong with you and if there is improve it a bit but you don't need to go naught to 100 in yeah just, you can have ambitions to be elon musk but i don't think mm. they need to get there in a you know it's good to be i have ambitions to be him i guess but I, i'm realist like, i don't care if i don't get i don't know but that's mm -hmm. that, and I'm happy. I'm just sharing this. I have no idea, no training, but I'm just saying I'm happy. Elon Musk does not get to be me, and um, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> and I think, and that he is would the agree that thing. he would. He wish he. I'm sure he wishes he could be me for a day. I'm sure he wishes he could be you for a day or a week. You know, like um, yeah. And then what reasons why? Because we have positives in our life versus his life. Yeah. Exactly. Well, well, we all have shits to go through every single day. It's that's just it. about how we see it. Everything have a positive. But that's a, a battle that you've built up yourself if you're suffering from that imposter syndrome. <laughs> that's an easy one to fix because just give it's up. It's easy when you know the right tools and have the right mindset. It's yeah. not when you are in a depression mode. It's not when you're in a victim mode because I was one of them. I've mm. been there, done that. Before that, I find out that, hey, I can shift my thinking because you can only focus on one emotion at a time. You can't be sad and happy at the same time. There will be a split second change. Yeah, so right. it is a split second decision in our mind that if we choose to look at things positively or choose to look at things negatively. Yeah, right. Well, um, what other... Um terms can you teach me so you got imposter syndrome are there any other cool names of things whatever cool name there is okay. i think it's Let's just go back way. to fake it till you make it so <laughs> i believe you know every tom dick and harry's an entrepreneur these days if mm. you've noticed um so 
obviously no one's Elon Musk is an entrepreneur. Um, mm. No one's him. So, mm. of course, they've got to fake it till they make it. Like, would you say? Or how? I see that, especially among the younger culture, with the use of Instagram or TikTok and yeah, things like that. Yeah, I was like about that. to say that. Yeah. Yeah, they use a lot of like the fame, the riches, the luxury to pretend themselves to portray themselves as someone that they're not. And people like to look at that as an inspiration. But inside of you, you will think that I wasn't there yet. I was actually going into the shop, taking the photos in the changing room instead of actually owning that shirt. That's feeling like becoming an imposter until yeah, that one that. day they can actually get it. But I guess if they're in that market, then, and I guess people flock to rich people too for the likes mm-hmm. and everything. So, because yeah. if you're rich, you're successful. Yeah, I guess it's a, you've got to really, well, so everyone out there, yes, I 100% go to the Rolex shop and get your mate to bring his camera phone in and you got to do it because you know that your com- competition's doing it. But um, but don't beat yourself down if you're not there yet because you will get there. You just It's like anything. You just got to work hard at it and it's part of the grind, I guess, these days. That's probably and not what about- you're telling, but. Yeah, also working smarter as well. We can, they, we all got 24 hours in a day. How do we spend it depending on how we want the result to be of our day? We can choose to do multiple things that will give us passive income to actually support us so we can earn money while we're sleeping. That is the <laughs> ultimate goal that what we wanted to do. So that's why the crypto uh, market is so big. There's all these uh, passive income links and things like that. Of course, there's a lot of scam as well to actually get people interested into working less and working smarter. Yeah, I've so heard you do crypto, need to go and work your, the crypto work niche yourself is, and find your info. is full of um, young people with cash to burn and they all hear the stories of turn a thousand dollars into a hundred thousand and yeah you would do this if you put your thousand here and oh this guy must be knowing what he's talking about because he's the guy with the rolexes and yeah. the ferrari pictures and he's just faking it until he yeah I've, so exactly. what do you so do you have people that work within the crypto like the fakeness of the crypto industry you must know a little bit about it if you've bought it up, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I I am in the crypto space as well. I have went into some of the scam that they actually get you into and then the company disappear. It does happen because there's always another way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now I'm actually trading myself. It helps to understand the history and the culture of it. When I got in, I didn't know much about it. So you get attracted by the uh, return, the return on investment, which yeah. is a lot lot of people get sucked into that but once you learn the technology the understanding of every single thing about crypto it helps you to realize and make the correct decision just like any kind of investment that you're willing to make either buying a car buying property or buying NFT, a land whatever that you wanted to do i suggest everyone to do their own research and don't just trust on what other people are saying or looking at a photo like what you just mentioned he's wearing a rolex he's driving for why or he must be trusted. No, do your own research and see <laughs> the potential of things. Yeah, okay. Well, that is interesting that people – and I be- guess people would come to you and they're just a broken mess because, because they're trying to keep up with the Joneses, you know. They're trying to – Yes or no, most no. of them will still have that – power within them like they're not the depressed type or anything like that like in that type but they have uh two side of them the outside is that you look very confident i'm used to be on stages talking to thousands of people and i'm very confident on stage but they don't know before i go up on stage i'm like hyperventilating and (laughs) doing my breathing work getting all of that done before i can go up on stage and everyone is allowed to have a fear because fear can be turned back into energy if we know how to channel it. Yeah, right. And you, and that's part of what you do. So, mm. um, like, uh, where, where did you start? Like, be, becoming a, like, launching the website, and and was like, this is it. Like, what what was the turning point there? 
I won my uh, makeup business for over 17 years already. And in during that time, I'm a big person about investment, knowing that uh, op- and seeing opportunity and giving it a go. Of course, that I have lost uh, money in businesses, but I also make good money from businesses. So it's about having building your entrepreneur mindset, understanding how a business run, and being able to separate emotion come from a logic point of view, especially when you're in a business environment world. And it is hard because I'm a very compassionate person. I have a big heart and I like to do good for everyone. But in a business term, that's a completely different. We need to understand the difference between empathy and compassion, where with empathy, you treat the person like a baby. You try to look after every single thing that they have and put their responsibility onto my own shoulder. So what would that do? It just put on too much weight and I am the one who's break down. But on the other hand, when we have compassion about everything, it's like, I hear you, I feel you, I understand you. And that's compassion. All that person wants is someone to listen and maybe give them guidance if they ask for it. But wow. most of us, because we care so much, we just give out all this suggestion and overloading them. And then they feel like, oh, my God, like this is way too much for me. She's just trying to sell me a program. She's just doing this thing and that. It's not a good thing. That genuine feeling is gone when you are too having that too empathy, uh, especially thinking about in a guy sense. Like I'm dating my cow and partner at the moment and he's a lady. Uh, I am someone who's very compassionate and very caring. He's so what? when I first go out with him, he is a tough man, but I do treat him like a baby sometimes <laughs> because I didn't know that my my compassion turned into empathy. So I didn't give him time to respect him. I didn't actually give him time to be a man that he is. So now I have learned to control myself to actually realize I just need to hear him, understand him and support him without giving him instruction of what to do next. Is he your, so you're his boss, he's not your boss. <laughs> Whose boss or not is okay and also based on what who's, information who should be the boss? situation. I think we should be both equal in a relationship. Oh, really? Both people need to build a castle. If only one person is building, there's no point because you will never find happiness, true happiness that way. Yeah, fair enough. And that's why you weren't happy previously. It sounded like <laughs> he was the boss. It's when you are with an artistic person, it can be like that. Yeah. And no, and when so you, you believe can't he had eventually... nar- narcissistic personality uh, disorder mm. and. Uh, yeah, heard, yeah, and he can be quite violent as well, so Ooh. which makes things very, very hard to actually deal with. And when people who went for abuse, they will try to find a way to not cause trouble. Okay. So it dims their light and so lose their confidence. Quiet. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And um, you, you say on your website and things that you uh, deal with girls, but do you uh, coach any uh, or bring confidence to any guys as well? I do work with some gentlemen, mainly in the new culture scene, because I do understand that male and female is a different mindset and thinking. So my partner actually does all the guys that comes in because he's a man. They have the masculine energy. Even for me, myself, I have a lot of masculine energy, but I'm learning to realize that I shouldn't use it on a man because you just like fighting. That's all you're going to do when you have masculine energy and masculine energy together. So you need to sort of find your way to actually bring your feminine energy. And that is something that everyone has. Every male and every female has both energy in them. It's depending yeah. on how they channel it. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, well, fair enough. And uh, so where where are you taking this now? So like in terms of what, what services you offer? I wanted to be able to help as many women as possible because I believe that a lot of women, especially in women, high women, uh, women. position, uh, yeah, many women that I'm helping because guys, they have their own cultures into it. But with women, especially when they went through abuse and things like that, they don't let people know. And during my time, my own experience was I was too scared, too proud, too afraid to let anyone know what's going on behind the closed door. 
So I want to be able to help those women, even they're a manager, they're executive, they're CEO of a company. They can reach out to someone for. But that would be pretty help. hard. Like if if one of your clients gets on to you, and then you're like, you say, yeah, yeah, what's going on? Help, help! I'm trapped. Mm. Like you know what I mean? Mm. They're like, yeah. That so Stay you deal calm. with that? Stay calm. Do you find ring the, a way out. Yeah, right. Stay calm. First thing you do is Because if he finds out, then he's going to really go crazy. There's a lot of ways that we can actually go around things and make sure that they are in a safe space. And yeah. thank God there's actually a lot of help now for women uh, in an abusive situation. So there are women that are I too scared know. too scared to leave their um, their partners. Always. And I was one of them. It's yeah. not just about the violence. It's also the scared thinking that I will never find another person again. So Even having the, him uh, around, the person's horrendous. Doesn't matter because that fear of being alone is even worse oh. than not having anyone. Really? Mm -hmm. The fear of being alone is quite real. Well, um, yeah, I think you've probably a few listeners there going, yeah, she's not as if she hit the nail on the head there. I need to talk to her because, um, <laughs> Yeah, you've you've said it like you've you've definitely walked in the shoes of someone that was thinking like that. So, yeah. Well, all right. So, where can people uh, reach reach out to you? Of course, I'll have all the links on the website <laughs> as well. So, but where where can they grab you at? I am on an, uh, across multiple social media platforms. So, if you search for Super Confident Coach, I'm the first one who comes up on Google. Yeah, so that and that's superconfidencecoaching.com. Um, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll have all the links and everything. And you're on a few podcasts as well, doing talks like this. Yeah, I have, I have been uh, very grateful to be able to go on to about 80 podcasts in the last year. Yeah, so I'm very grateful for that because. Mm -hmm. I was someone in silence. No one knows what my story and who the hell am I to share my story? I thought I was not good enough. I'm not powerful enough. And no one will see me that I am this woman who is deserving to be heard. And yeah. that's a change for me ever since that I go into the coaching space and have my self-development done and I heal myself from it. Martha Mock unshackled. <laughs> the chain no longer remains. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's good and using that energy and that story to say I'm on the other side and I can now help girls get out on the other side, women get out on the exactly. other side. Exactly. All right, we great. We deserve the support. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Well, um, like I said, all, all the contact details for Martha will be on the website and uh, we'll put the links in. And uh, Martha, thanks for coming on today and you have a, fan, a great night there. Thank you so much for having me. It's been fun. No worries.